What's up, Saints? I hope you had an amazing weekend. I'm Raylan Putnam. And I'm Emily Pip. And, and this, this is SFHS, SFHS Today. Today. In national news, a 15-year-old boy is in custody following a shooting spree in Raleigh, North Carolina. He left at least five people dead and multiple others injured, including some in critical condition. The shooter himself was also reported to be in critical condition, according to the Washington Post. There have been 532 mass shooting incidents so far this year, according to the Gun Violence Archive. One thing that helps people when tragedy strikes is blood donations. The NHS blood drive is tomorrow, so we hope people will give the gift of life. We spoke with some NHS members and the advisor for more information. October 19th is our first big blood drive here at the school, so we'll be looking for any blood donors. You have to be 16 years or older to do that. The blood drive is located in the back gyms um, during the school day. It's a really cool opportunity to uh, help save lives and get involved. All the blood that gets donated helps um, to save lives. Each donation saves up to three lives. It's for a good cause. Thanks for that important information. In state news, Education Minnesota's annual conference begins Thursday, which means no school Thursday or Friday. Educators across the state will be attending. We had Vincent Smith and George Sparks speak with the teachers union representatives here at the high school. My name is Ryan Furick. I'm president of Education Minnesota St. Francis, which is our local educator union that represents six work groups in the St. Francis area schools. I'm also a half-time teacher over at Bar None in our, and part of our Saints Online program. MEA is a conference, Minnesota Educator Academy, that happens once per year. Uh, it's normally the third week in October. Uh, educators come in from around the state of Minnesota and get some professional development uh, that might not otherwise be available at their local school district. However, one of the really cool things, and we have had teachers in our district in the past that actually present at the conference, and uh, that's definitely something that you can look forward to in the future. Most, most school districts across the country have some sort of fall break, um, long weekend set up, because otherwise, through September and October, and up until Thanksgiving, the school year really is like a kind of a sprint. Uh, and so whether it's MEA weekend in Minnesota, or it's you know just a fall break um, in other states, uh, schools find that it's necessary to have some sort of kind of a moment to breathe. Well, now that we know why we have MEA break, let's find out what students do with the time off in this week's RQT with reporters Carter and Taylor. It's the random question thing. Ding. What are your plans for MEA break? Uh, I will be going up north to my cabin in Cross Lake, Minnesota. Yeah. What are you going to do up there? I'll uh, probably go riding with the family. What do you ride? Uh, the Suzuki dirt bike uh, 250. What are your plans over MEA break? Uh, hunting. What are you hunting for? Uh, deer. Where do you hunt? Uh, just north of Malacca at my family's farm. What are you doing over MEA break? I'm going up north. What are you doing up there? Uh, I'm celebrating my mom's birthday, so we're going four wheeling, fishing, go kart racing. That's pretty much it. Hang out with family. Where up north? I'm not really sure. It's about two hours from here. Plans over MEA break. Over MEA, I will be turning 18, so I am going to celebrate with my friends and family. What are you doing for your birthday? I am going to go with my friends to get have a spa day, and we are going to stay the night in a hotel. What are your plans for MEA break? My family and I are going to Chicago. We plan to um, go see some of the sights there and hang out while my husband goes to a trade show for work. What are you going to be doing, Emily? I'm going to be hanging out with friends. What about you? I have to work. Well, speaking of work, a graduate from St. Francis continues to work on his art. Michael Priner and Neil Brasky caught up with former student Anton Harishnik, who makes public art that has been seen all over the state. My name is Anton Harishnik, and I paint for a living. How much time do you spend painting? Um, on a weekly basis, I'd probably average out around three to five hours a day. What kind of painting do you do? 
Um, mostly, as you can see, super colorful, uh, vibrant colors are what I kind of like to do. Um, don't get me wrong, I like the black and white, but uh, there's just something about this uh, color spectrum that uh, personally gets me off the way that uh, <laughs> the way that I like, I guess. I don't know. What is your favorite piece that you've done? Uh, my favorite piece currently is that uh, VFW number 246 downtown Minneapolis off of Lindale. Um, I did a 35 foot wide uh, mural of a uh, tarantula um, and it's for my series called Flashlight Animals. What is the biggest project you've done? <laughs> uh, that, that would be the biggest project that I've done for sure. It's like 16 feet tall. What methods do you use to create your artwork? I've done everything. I've, I went to school for auto body and I went and painted cars. I've airbrushed a bunch. Um, but in the last six years, I've mainly done um, impasto painting with knives and brushes um, for my uh, iconic faces series that I've done. And then uh, recently, this is mostly uh, spray paint. And uh, spray paint's been what I've primarily done in the last three years, just honing in the skills and getting the hours in. How much time would you say on average it takes you to complete a painting? So my iconic series of faces, I would do them live at shows and I would start from finish to, to end and they'd be like on average like four to six hours for, for these ones. And then like this one, this one has over 60 hours of um, painting done to it so just kind of depends on uh, what series I'm doing and what uh, method I'm using to spread the paint and what other types of artwork do you do besides like a flat like canvas um, when I went to school for auto body tech I learned to weld uh, I got certified in welding and I taught my dad how to weld and so every once in a while we if you haven't seen my yard it's just full of freaking like metal art and so that's something that I'll do on the side. And, bef and before I got the good deal at Michael's for the canvases, I was uh, woodworking my own frames and stretching my own canvases to save money. So that's what I do when I'm, that's another art form. There's so many different art forms from editing photos. Uh, that's a huge one. That's so underlooked. Um, to advertising is almost an art form these days. Um, it depends. They're sandwich artists too, you know? <laughs> Thank you, Anton, for sharing your art with us. Now, now let's pass, pass it over, over to sports. sports. Hey, 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 Saints. I'm Braden Terrace. And I'm Grace Kokwis. And, and this, this is Sports. Is National sports news, the Minnesota Vikings beat the Miami Dolphins 24-16, making their record 5-1 and, and keeps them leading the division. In school sports, the girls' soccer team won their first section game 12-2 against Hutchinson. They will be playing their next section game at home tonight at 5 versus Zimmerman. In addition, Coach Joan Johnson was named Conference Coach of the Year. Our reporters spoke with Johnson and some of our players heading into sections. We had a great regular season. We finished 12-4 and four overall. How do you feel about the game tonight? Um, should be a good competitive game. We played Zimmerman in the past. Um, during regular season, we beat them 6-1, to one, but they're a tough squad. Um, have really good coaches, so they'll be coming out to play. But we have a little bit of an advantage because we play really well at home, so hopefully we can keep that streak of playing well at home alive. How does it feel to win the Minnesota State High School Coach of the Year Award? Good. I'm very honored to be recognized as Coach of the Year again for a different association. So. It's a great honor. How do you feel about going into sections based off your season so far? Um, I feel pretty confident with the season that we've had. We've played Zimmerman in the past and we've had good outcomes, so hopefully we can play them again and win. Um, yeah, I'm pretty confident. Um, our team uh, really knows how to pull things together and I think it'll be a good competition, especially since we're going into sections and everyone's 
playing it like playing their game like it's the last time they're gonna play. So. How does it feel scoring your first varsity goal against Hutchinson? Uh, it feels really good. It's definitely like a dream come true because I've always wanted to score a goal for my high school. So yeah, it felt really good. In more soccer news, the boys played their first sections game against Zimmerman and beat them 1-0 in overtime. They played a night at home at 7 against Princeton. Girls tennis went to single sections last Tuesday at Elk River. Some of our reporters went and asked them how they performed. How did sections go last Tuesday? Um, they went better than expected. We all made it to the second round and some of us made it to the third round. Um, we were ranked fifth in sections and we upset the number four seed. And then in the third round, we lost the one seed. And sections went well. I won my first round as a 12 seed against the fifth seed, so that was good. But then I lost in the second round. Um, it went good. We won our plan. Um, then we lost our second match to the number two seed. Football also played on a Friday versus Big Lake and beat them with a devastating final score of 48 to zero and a great team win, making their record seven to zero. One of the many players who contributes to the team is senior Philip Conan. He was also featured on Randy Shaver's high school football show last week. That makes Philip our athlete of the week. How long have you been playing football? I've been playing football since second grade, it's so like 10 years. Um, my stepdad just like showed me the sport and I always like grew up watching the game, so I just kind of love to play it. What made you want to become the head football coach? Uh, sports were always a really big part of my life growing up and uh, that kind of influenced me as a, on a career path and I've been a teacher coach ever since. If you could give the younger kids advice, what would you say? Um, just to stay dedicated in the off season, you know, work hard, have fun. Phil Conant is probably one of our most impactful football players. Um, he plays on offense, tight end, and fullback. He's a great physical presence at fullback. And then as a defensive player, he's even better. Um, I was just looking at some statistics, but he has like 10 tackles for loss, a sack, a couple of forced fumbles, and he is just an absolute wrecking crew on the field. Do you have any future plans for football? Um, I plan on playing college football but it depends, I don't know where. Philip is doing an awesome job as a team leader, team captain on the defensive side of the ball especially, but has been a really productive force as a blocker and a pass catcher on offense, but uh, he's willing to do a lot of the work uh, kind of behind the scenes where you know he's making room for running backs and other guys to score touchdowns and make plays for us. While we have been watching our varsity football team every Friday night, our JV football team has a record of 4-3. and three. Some of our team went and got interviews and updates on the season. How is the season going for the team so far? It's going well. After a 1-2 and two start, uh, we have found some things that are working for us on both sides of the ball. And we are now 4-3, and three, hoping to get a win Monday against Big Lake and finish our season 5-3. and three. We should have pulled some of the games through that we lost, but, you know, I think we're still doing pretty far. What have, what have been some highlights in your team's season? Um, we've had some interesting wins, such as our last one. We went to overtime with Sock Rapids after uh, being down and then up and then down. We had to score a couple touchdowns late and then go to, going to overtime with them was pretty fun. And we were able to win on uh, the first offensive play on a pass to Owen Lamson. Tomorrow, the football team plays at home starting at 7 against Elk River, who is also undefeated. It will be a tough game for senior night. The theme is Blaze Orange, and the team helps to fill the stands with a rowdy crowd. The game will also be featured as a Care 11 spotlight game. That's all we have for you this week. Let's get back to Emily and Ray Lynn. Thank you, Grace and Brayden. And before we go, we have a spooky opportunity for you guys. The theater program is setting up and helping scare people at Donner's Halloween Trail in order to raise money for their program. They recommend that you dress warm as it is an outdoor event. It is fun for all ages with a $5 donation to enter the trail and a $3 donation for a hot dog and drink. All proceeds go to St. Francis Drama Program. That's all for this week. Stay, Stay safe, safe, Saints! Saints.